and write fiction. And I can write like the filthiest stuff and read it out loud. And, you know, but if it's fiction, I don't care. So this is not fiction. So I cleaned it up. <laughs> so when I was in high school, uh, my father was in his glory. He wore Italian suits and he smoked Cuban cigars and he drank Mendoza brandy. And he gave me some advice about girls. Uh, the night I drove Amanda up to Putnam, put his arm around me and said, boy, don't do anything that the girl's family can sue us over. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the, the girl, and I'll give you one other piece of advice I'll tell you later. <laughs> uh, the, girl, the girl in question was Amanda Wallace, and uh, I, I was in love. She, uh, she smelled like white rain chimp. And I think they've since changed the recipe, uh, perhaps by s because of the tainted association. Um, she was pale and tall, and she ran her, wore her hair long, and she, she ran tech for the school show choir. And I couldn't sing or dance, but I joined the choir, so I'd have an excuse to talk to her. And they were pushing an international theme that year, and I could still hop a hobak and a sertiki, so buy me a drink. <laughs> she was mysterious. I don't think quirky had entered the lexicon as an appropriate yet, but uh, was she seeing anyone? No one knew. No one knew her at all. She loved jokes about death. She dared me to get my ears pierced, and I did, both of them, which made my mother cry. She made me gifts that were highly symbolic but impenetrable, a pair of... <coughs> Painted tongs, <laughs> a box full of rose petals and broken glass. <laughs> and she said, you have to figure out what it means. Uh, I hung the tongs on my wall for a long time. And when people would come by, I would, I would get into a dialogue with them. What do you think it means? And one day, she and I cleared boxes of old music notes from a, an attic, and we listened to her, her tapes of... Uh, March of the Falsettos in Falsetto Land. Do you guys remember those yes. musicals? Yes. Remember that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, our, our friend Leo helped us with the boxes, and he, he came out to me on the drive home. And what shocks me is that I was shocked. Uh, <laughs> but it was 1993, and I said, whoa, you know, uh, there's a lot of boys out there. <laughs> and they, the world was full of surprises, you know? I. I and at that age, the whole surface of the planet is revealing its colors, you know, and everything's too bright to look at it. You're surrounded by people all the time, and you're lonely, and the world is ending, and it will be forever, you know? Um, but Amanda never seemed to feel that way. She was calm. She kept her own counsel. She seemed to like me, and I assumed it was my due. But whenever I got close, she'd shy off, and I didn't take a hint. The hint was mixed. I was 16 and I knew from the movies that what one did when one felt in love was to make a declaration of mm -hmm. one's love, right? Mm -hmm. So we took a walk around our neighborhood in the rain. And when we got back to our house outside the front door, I took a deep breath. And I would brace myself. I would unfold my heart and she would kiss me. And the heavens would unzip. <laughs> and, you know, everything would work out beautifully. And I took her hands and she looked terrified. <laughs> and her hands were cold, and I said, I have something to tell you. I said, I'm in love with you. And she laughed so hard oh. that she actually fell down <laughs> on the gravel driveway. I remember this very clearly. And I said, all right, I'll go. And she said, no, 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 it's not that. She said, I thought you were going to tell me you were gay. <laughs> I said, well, why would you think that? And she said, well, I, and then she came out to me. <laughs> and it turns out she was dating uh, this mortician and had been for years. Uh, and we were only 15. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I knew her, I'd met her. And I said, but she's so cold. <laughs> and she said, oh, you don't know her very well. And I said, well, there, you know, there's a lot of girls out there. <laughs> um, and she said, no, no, never mind, don't go. She said, uh, let me call you tonight. So she, I got a call later that night. And she said, okay, and these are her words. She said, let's give it the old school try. <laughs> and she invited
invited me to go to this play uh, in Putnam, which was an hour's drive north. I was from Norwich, Connecticut. And, uh, and that night, it was going to be foggy. My dad took me aside. And he put his arm around me and he said, boy, <laughs> if you ever find yourself in a situation, <laughs> make sure that you protect yourself. <laughs> That you protect the situation. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we went to see the play. I don't know. We, 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 we got there an hour early. We parked by the railroad tracks. And, and she said, What would you do if I crawled into your lap right now? And we made out. And we, we, we necked, you know, before the play, we necked during the intermission. And the drive home was foggy. It was more fog than I've seen since then. And I drive a lot. And and, uh, and she described on the way home. I was terrified. And I had my. I remember looking at my knuckles and my father's driving gloves on the wheel. And she she described what she wanted her funeral to look like. She wanted a, a white beer and she wanted to be wearing a white dress and the surging sea and they would just roll her in. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then the next day she called me <laughs> and she said, remember what happened last night? And I said, yeah. <laughs> Do you? And, and she said, I don't ever want that to happen again. <laughs> she said, I don't think I'm straight after all. <laughs> and I said, uh, okay, all right, well, huh. And she said, but we, we should still be friends. She said, because we really have a connection. And do you want to go see a play next weekend? I said, all right. She said, can I invite my friend Kevin to join us? And so we went to a play that weekend, and Kevin joined us. And uh, after the play, we all went for a big walk in the high school football field. And she, um, when I, I only found this out later. When my back was turned, she was giving Kevin little pecks on the, on the lips. And um, so later, so I, I found this out, and I, I confronted Kevin. <laughs> I, uh, I invited him to take a walk, and we took a walk through an art museum, and I actually had this manila folder full of poems I had written about her, and I, I showed it to him. I don't know why I did <laughs> My love is bigger than yours. <laughs> and he... Uh, it hurts so much. <laughs> it was, it was uh, dramatic. And I told him about the mortician, and I told him about, I said, well, how long have you been with her? Okay, so this, I was, last weekend I was, uh, and, uh, and he eventually broke up with her, uh, I think. And uh, he and I are very close now, actually. <laughs> We're very good friends. Um, so is that the end of the story? No. Uh, within a month, we were sucking each other's faces in my parents' basement, you know? Um, she, her condition was that I not tell anybody. Because she said the mortician was still getting over the breakup. And she would be upset if she heard anything. And I believe this. And I plead youth and, aid and delusion. And uh, I sent her a collection of Charles Bukowski poems. <laughs> which her mother intercepted. <laughs> and Mrs. Wallace called my mother and read her all the filthy parts. <laughs> and it was all filthy parts. <laughs> and my mother stormed up to my bedroom and, and got all the Charles Bukowski and threw it away, <laughs> threw it in the trash, which was actually really good literary criticism. <laughs> But it was questionable parody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you filmed this, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love you, mom. Uh, so we were on and off for a while, and uh, I would call Kevin, and we would talk about her. You know, what what did she want? What was she getting at? You know, and whenever Kevin called, I would answer the phone. I had a phone in my room. It was a landline. We had these things back then. And, uh, and I would answer the phone. Whenever someone called, I would say, hello, lover. Or I thought it was really smooth. <laughs> and one time, my mother 
burst the door open from my room. She said, I know about you and Kevin. <laughs> Apparently Amanda's mother had told her that Amanda was gay. <laughs> and Amanda's, and my mother said, next time you'll say you're that way. And she thought it was some sort of rebellious deviousness that I was going to, going to foist on them. Um, so I went away to college. And uh, Amanda and I would meet when I'd be back in town. And she, she dyed her hair red, and some of the red stained her face. And I, I took a picture, and I brought her picture up to college with me, my copy of Naked Lunch. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and I thought maybe, you know, I was getting away from her, but I, I, I went to school at Emerson, and in the, the Boston Common, she, she joined AmeriCorps. Uh -huh. Remember that, Bill Clinton's service program? I think it's still around. Yeah, it is. And they wear ill-fitting khaki pants, <laughs> and they wear, like, red jumpers. They have strong feelings. <laughs> they, okay, and uh, and she, uh, I, I went to school in, in, on Boyle Street, and I would look out my window and I would watch her doing her morning calisthenics uh, in the Boston Common. <coughs> so we went out some more, and uh, the last time she broke up with me, I broke an antique humidor against the wall. Um, that was my dad's. <laughs> I'm kind of bad about that. And then, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't have a lot of ideas in 1996. <laughs> and, and the ideas that I had were all bad. And, uh, and I, I, I treated the other women that, that were around me poorly, you know. I, I thought fate had cursed me. I was young, and I felt old, but I acted younger than I was. The last day she called me, uh, she had come into a, a bushel of onions somehow. <laughs> and she wanted to make an onion soup, and could she use my kitchen? And so she came to my apartment, and we made an onion soup, and it was undersalted. And, uh, and things didn't feel right, you know? We felt um, awkward. You know, our, our, our bodies felt big. And, her jokes uh, were bad, and I felt insincere. And she, we were going to be, we were both going to be home over Christmas. And she said, um, "Give me a call." I said, "All right, I'll call you." And she left early that morning, and I never saw her again. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>